Hello, I'm Neil Whelan, and welcome to the Wesleyan Podcast. In this episode, brought to you by Wesleyan Financial Services, Head of Division Alec Colley and Regional Manager Wendy Bailey return to the microphones to discuss the differences in various asset classes for those who are looking to invest. They'll take you from cash investments right up to investing in equities and the stock market. They'll also explain how you can invest your money and the various vehicles and wrappers involved. Don't worry, it will all make sense once you've listened. Before we get into it though, this is the reminder that this podcast is for information only and doesn't provide financial advice. Also, the value of investments can go down as well as up, meaning you might get back less than you invest and your capital is at risk. This is why it's best to talk to an expert about your finances, and I'll be back at the end to tell you how to do that. But for now, I'll hand you over to Wendy. And first up, Alec. So Wendy, there's different places you can put your money. I know these are called asset classes. Can you give a bit of a description on what asset classes are and what our uh, listeners should think about and bear in mind? Yes, Alex. So I think it's important to recognise that these asset classes, places to put your money, each come with their own set of unique uh, opportunities and their own set of unique risks. And it's really important to understand what they are before you look at putting your money in any of these. So if we start at cash, cash tends to be the thing that's most familiar to people. Um, Cash is great for putting money that you're looking to use or spend in the short term. Um, The downside of investing in cash is that inflation will have that ongoing impact on it and it's very unlikely to be able to keep up with inflation, which means it will lose value as time passes. So not great for putting your money there for any length of time. The next thing we look at are gilts and bonds. Gilts, government gilts and corporate bonds are loans, gilts to the government and corporate bonds to companies. And they just pay an interest rate that's slightly above the prevailing rate that you would get in cash. So they're really great stabilisers as part of your overall portfolio. And they do get you potentially a little bit more growth than cash would. Um, the risks associated with gilts and bonds is that they are still traded on a market, which means that they can go up and down in value. And a bit of a fun fact about gilts is the reason why they were called gilts is that the documents which used to be the government loan, because it's just a government loan, isn't it, um, a yeah. gilt, but they were actually dipped in gold um, in the past. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm not sure whether that still happens, um, but uh, it was an interesting fun, fun fact, and that's why they're called um, UK gilts and gilt edge securities. Anyway, enough of the fun facts. Um, move on to your third one, which I think is commercial property. Yes. So property, as as we all know, we've seen the property market um, really buoyant for periods of time over the last few decades. And so there are definite growth opportunities available in the property market. We tend to focus on commercial property um, for investments just because we we are then able to understand rental income over a longer period of time than if we we concentrated on residential property. And also on top of that, you've got your um, capital growth value of the property itself. The downside is just the same as, as it would be for if you're buying your main home, it's potentially that property value might might reduce over time rather than grow. I think the the other risk, I suppose, is especially if it's a pure property fund, is the assets are a bit illiquid because they're harder to sell. Um, So very much dependent on the market and how the kind of the market sentiment is uh, with with commercial property. The last one is, uh, I think most people know about shares or equities. So uh, let's talk about them a wee for uh, what the benefits are and what the downsides are for shares and equities. Shares historically, Alec, have have been really reliable for providing really great long term growth. And that's why they're they're something that's quite attractive for investors to um, we're looking for for growth. Now, of course, shares or equities are just you buying a share in a company and you the growth that you get is then tied in quite closely to how that company performs going forward. So the advantages are if that company does really, really well, you're going to get a decent return on your money. If the company doesn't do so well, then that can impact your return. It's interesting there are different types of shares as well, isn't there? Because there are some companies who pay, whose share price doesn't change that much, but they pay a really good dividend yield. Um, because yes. you then share in the profits of um, the actual underlying 
company because you're ultimately a shareholder and you should benefit from that. Whereas there's some companies who, you know, want to kind of make sure that their share price grows and they're quite active in actually making sure that their, their share price grows. So in any good balance portfolio, it's making sure that you have a really good balance between those different types of shares um, as well. Yes, and I think that goes for all of the other assets that we've talked about and that really it's about eggs and baskets and you don't want to put too much in any one place um, and avoid concentrating too much money um, on the, the kind of on, on one thing to perform for you. Yeah, and also I suppose with shares we also have the option to look at different parts of the world whether that be the North American market or the Japanese market or the Asian market or whatever market you kind of look at. There's lots of different markets for different share types as well. Yes. And it's about making or sure if you, you think that through. Or if you want to stick it at home, then yes, you can invest solely and put all your money into UK funds. And there's lots of, of great UK companies out there as well, of course, as, as well as other ones around the world. Yeah. So thanks for that, Wendy. So I now understand the kind of key asset classes. Um, now we want to turn our attention to the different ways we can invest in kind of the vehicle, I suppose, uh, the product. Um, now there's pensions, there's ISAs, there's with profit funds, there's unit charge shares, commodities, um, deposit accounts. It's a whole raft of ways clients can invest their money. Can you help kind of break that down a wee bit and kind of like the key points um, that we need to think about? Yes, I think, Alec, if we break it down into two firstly and look at investment vehicles and then wrappers. So investment vehicles are where you put all these bits of and pieces of gilts, bonds, property, shares, etc. Um, because clearly you don't want to be spending all of your time managing that money yourself. So what we do is we we pull it together with lots of other investors who have the same preferred approach to risk as you do. And you can invest in either the most common ones would be a unit trust or an open ended investment company or an OIC, as it's known, or an investment bond. They're your kind of three main um, types of investment vehicles for pooled style investments that are managed for you. Now, when they're managed, they can be either managed passively or actively. At Wesleyan, we really believe in, in active fund management and our fund managers are, are there every day and looking at, at what's best um, to, to put your money into each day. Um, but there are there are also passive investments available to you, which can be tracker funds or ETFs, for example. Um, now, on top of that, if we look at the wrappers, you can have um, on the unit trust and the OIC, uh, you can have an ISA wrapper or you can have a pension wrapper or you can even have a trust wrapper. And each of those three things are done for tax efficiency. And everybody's different, and there are varying reasons and varying advantages to, to each of the three options there. And I think this is where, certainly when I speak to people at events or when I'm out and about speaking to doctors or, or dentists or, or educators, it gets a bit confusing about pension versus ISA versus an investment bond or a unit trust. And, 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 and actually, that's quite clear. So you've got products, which are the, the unit trust, the OIX, the investment bond that you said. And on top of that, you put these kind of tax efficient wrappers you know, on top of them. So that's the kind of key yes. product and the wrapper are very, very different. And you need advice on both. Um, yes. The wrappers will be dependent on your own personal tax circumstances. Absolutely. Everybody's different. And what's what's the best thing for one person is not necessarily going to be the best thing for you. And it's really important that you get professional advice and have a, a real, real close analysis done on your circumstances so that um, everything that you do and every decision that you make about your money is done with tax efficiency in mind. And that's our show for this week. Thank you to Alec and Wendy. If you are looking for expert financial advice, go to wesleyan.co.uk, where you can book a no-obligation appointment with one of our specialist financial advisors. As for finding out about Wesleyan more generally, you can find us on Twitter, Stroke X, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. And if you found this podcast useful, you can like and subscribe to us on all the usual platforms, as well as find us on YouTube, where there's a whole library of videos covering a wide range of financial planning topics. But that's it for now. So until next time, thanks for listening.